Gora Vijay Namaha Vancha Kaupatrubhyascha Kripa Sindhuviya Evacha Patitanam Pavanebhyo Vaishnavebhyo Namo Namaha Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Advaita Karadhara Shri Vas Adi Shri Gora Bhakta Vrinda And what's that other one begins with Hare? Ah, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare 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 Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. So Jai Shila Bhakti Sunda Govinda Dev Goswami Maharaj Ki Jai. Jai Shila Bhakti Rokka Kshridha Dev Goswami Maharaj Ki Jai. Jai Shila Esi Bhakti Vedanta Swami Prabhupada Ki Jai. Shila Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur Ki Jai. Shri Rupanuga Guru Bhaga Ki Jai. Shri Chaitanya Saraswati Mat Ki Jai. Shri Chaitanya Saraswati Acharya Vrinda Ki Jai. All the assembled Worldwide devotees ki jai and all the unassembled worldwide devotees ki jai. Netai gora premanandi hari hari go. All right, so something good that is, we've in whatever way we did remember, but we've remembered our Sampradaya, Mahaprabhu, six Goswamis, Radha Krishna, Lalita, Vishaka, their associates, and specifically Sri Guru, the Vaishnavas, Panchatakra and the Maha Mantra. So, something good has happened. So, um, we can start. It's a few minutes past five here. It's a few minutes past whatever time it is with you. Three o'clock, is it? Something like that? Oh, yes. 3.06 here. 3.06, yeah. So... And in here. And? Oh, yes. What time is it there in Australia? 8.10 a.m. 8.10 a.m. Okay. So, we're all over the world. And maybe all of you, except Lilavati, I'm not sure, have already uh, been in some live, like in person, back to back to basics. BBBC. BBC? No, BBBC. Maybe, I think all of you, maybe except for Lilavati, you've been in already some back-to-back -to, -back to basics that we've uh, done in different places, originating from Seva Ashram by Sri Govinda Kund in Nabadi. But today, I think some title was given, like What Srila Gurudev Wants From Us, Part 1. So, I just thought, that I can speak for a, for a few minutes to begin with, and then we can have feedback from others of the things that you know and on any, you know, anything related to our like, basics thing. But I thought that for a few minutes, I'd just say something, and then we'll open things up a little bit. So, um, uh, inter well, interestingly or not, the other day, uh, here in the morning program, then we just started thinking something happened and then we thought, oh, Gurudev really doesn't like that. And then back to Lalita, she pointed out something about the, the ladies wearing the saris and which color saris Gurudev didn't like. Then I thought that is somewhere that something that we can kind of discuss with each other just to bring to each other's notice. And you may know some things or know things that we've missed that we, I mean, kind of myself, I suppose, <laughs> collected together. Uh, from that talk, some things that you know that like rattled, you can say, disturb Gurudev. Like, really, we don't want to be disturbing Gurudev. And uh, so when we know these things, then we can try to put them into practice in our life. So um, what Gurudev does like is not doing the following things. So these are one or two things. First of all, it's kind of started with Bhakti Lalita mentioning here about the uh, deep blue saris that Gurudev did not like that the ladies dress in this like deep blue. I don't know if it's called a peacock blue. I don't think so because peacocks are a bit more like lighter blue. But anyhow, deep blue is apparently the color of Radharani, her clothing or particularly related to her. We can't limit her to only one color. But as we understand about Krishna, Krishna is known to be wearing a yellow dress, Pitambar. So this yellow, bright kind of yellow color. We know in the temples, 
Then the deities are dressed in various colors for variety, but the deep blue color is related with Radharani, just as the yellow color is related to uh, Krishna. So Gurudev did not like this. And by the way, these things, Gurudev, in the earlier years, he used to like repeatedly be saying these things. And in the later years, we understand if you only kind of met Gurudev in the last two or three years, or maybe a bit more, I'm, I'm not sure. But Gurudev sort of gave up saying things because he's saying them again and again. And he's seeing that even some of his close devotees are not doing what he asked. So he's thinking, okay, why will I say anything more? But we're letting you know these things. So that was number one, the color of the sari, deep blue sari not to wear. And for everybody, men and women, but in particular, when he's seeing, because the men, kind of the fashion started to be, when they're wearing non-devotional clothes, they're wearing black. And we see, well, especially our Russians, we don't have any Russians with us today, okay? Especially our Russians seem to like wearing black a lot. But Gurudev didn't, did not like black. But for men and for women, he, he didn't appreciate the black color. So, I mean, I'm just telling you something that I kind of disturbed, and that's not maybe a major disturbance. And then another one, while on clothing, was Gurudev in the whole of Chaitanya Sarasat Mat, not just coming to the temple for the temple program, but anywhere in the temple, he wanted devotees to be wearing dhoti and kota and saris for the ladies. So, we, this idea that, oh, the temple is only in Navadip. Really, we want to feel and know that the temple is wherever our temples are around the world. So that actually is Navadip. And, and really, it is true that we do visit different places and we feel stronger the, the purity of Chaitanya Sarasatma's teaching, practice, etc. in the temples in different places in the world than when we are in India. Uh, sometimes, because India, we know, you know that everything changes, fluctuates up and down. So when, when we're in the temple, we should try to wear, I mean, we should wear the devotional clothing. And Gurudev for men did not want them wearing the, what we call bacta pants, just those cotton pants and a, and a kota, but he wanted dhoti and kota. And for women, he did not approve of wearing Punjabi, which women think, oh, this is very chaste, it is a good thing. But he did not approve the Punjabi, which means like the pants and the top, or the gopi dress, what's called nowadays the gopi dress. And Gurudev, anyway, just to let you know that one. Uh, so those are some things about clothing. And um, what he did not like is the men cutting off the shika, so there's no shika there. He said, maybe a little shika, but shika will be there. We are Krishna's devotees. We are Vaishnava. We want to give our life to Krishna, like this. But so Gurudev did not like that, oh, look, and he would notice like very much and comment when the devotees are going, they cut off their shika. Why they've cut off their shika? So anyway, this is something, just to know these things, it is to be known. Um, oh, well, I mean, other th some things that rattled Gurudev very much in the temple was wasting money. I mean, that was something which really would get Gurudev's blood pressure high. And if he saw that devotees are like creaming money off the top when they go into the market and you know, this happened with you know, different things. Devotee is going to get fuel for the generator. And then they're getting a receipt, you know, which is saying more than was there. You know, that really disturbed Gurudev. So, you know, carefulness with funds, you can say, both for Gurudev and Guru Maharaj. And in my life, the angriest I saw Guru Maharaj was with a devotee uh, who, an Indian devotee, who had misused, pocketed, whatever it may be, I'm not the Paramatma, but some money that was meant for the um, boga, purchasing boga for the Lord, for the deities. And Guru Maharaj was furious. I mean, he was standing tall, shouting the devotee on the ground, on his 
on his knees at that time. He'd given obeisances, and Guru Maharaj had called for him, and he was furious with him, like really roaring. So, and that was about misappropriation of funds. And Guru Maharaj himself, for a long time, you can say maybe all the way until he handed over the charge to Srila Gurudev, um, or when he gave him sannyas, you know, quite until quite late, Guru Maharaj himself would hand the funds to the devotees who are going to go shopping. And we've seen this repeatedly from being in the classes. We are sitting there with Guru Maharaj in the morning, with Srila Sridhar Maharaj in the morning, and he's giving some you know, very fine, very sweet, affectionate harikata. And then a devotee comes up from the bandari, from the, the store for the kitchen, and saying, then kind of interrupts everything. And Guru Maharaj allowing him to, and he's explaining, we need sugar, we need this, we need that. And then this way, Guru Maharaj is then calling that time Tapan, his associate, like we had Gurudev would call for Coca. <laughs> but Tapan was the name, actually previous name of one of his uh, associates, who, uh, assistants who was uh, there on his veranda. And he would call Tapan and he'd ask him to bring actually a money belt that he'd been given from the West. And that money belt, Guru Maharaj himself with his like poor eyesight, but he would bring out the money and hand the money. And then we're there one day and the, the devotee said to ask the Guru Maharaj, said, Guru Maharaj, you're giving very uh, high uh, uh, concentrated, like Hari Kata, but then interrupted by giving out the money for the temple. Surely you know, somebody else can do this. But Guru Maharaj said, I consider it as service to Radharani, that she is the proprietor of the of the wealth. She is the energy, is Radha, Radha Krishna, Krishna and Radha. Though those of you who mix with the Hindus, you know that Hindus are always thinking Lakshmi, Lakshmi Narayan. And Narayan is coming from Krishna and Lakshmi, is, her origin is from Radharani. So actual wealth in all senses is coming from Srimati Radharani. So Guru Mahar is saying this. I consider it a service to Radharani to look after the funds. Then you can understand that when something is being misused, then Guru Maharaj is very disturbed. Guru Dev was very disturbed. Okay, so this was just this was another point, and another one that really, and some some devotees they kind of were very almost hurt by this, but. Gurudev did not like devotees getting up late in the morning. And especially, they're not in the, they don't come to see him in the morning after the, the, pro, the um, uh, arati in the temple, which was uh, very often the time when devotees would come up. And then maybe eight o'clock in the morning or something, they'd come up to Gurudev. They've not been in the morning program, and they'd come up to Gurudev, and then... They've been basically asleep. They haven't been anywhere. They've just been asleep. And then Gurudev would, you know, literally, and Chinmoy Dev, who knows this one, you know, pick up the newspaper and hold it like, in, like <laughs> they just pick it up. So I completely blocked off, like shunned. I mean, really, he did not like that. He didn't, Gurudev did not like laziness. And this getting up in the morning part, it was his life. And we've been there with him all the time. And you know, we try to follow that and happily try to follow that like all the time. So getting up late was something that rattled Gurudev. I mean, really, we're mentioning the, those things. It's kind of good to know. And, uh, and not attending Mongolati. Well, yes, we know that one. And we know that also from Guru Maharaj, the Srila Sridhar Maharaj. He told those who do, do not attend Mongolati, they will not get breakfast. And that wasn't just you know, for fun. There's a reason. And it's not, I mean, that's about the only thing I know. Oh, we, okay, we know some other things where Guru Maharaj stopped breakfast for devotees when they did things wrong. Um, but that was you know, like a specific thing that, no, everyone will come to Mongolati. And we know how, oh, here it's 5 a.m. I've been up since 3.20. You can see my <laughs> clock. But the morning time, Really, it's the best time everywhere. 
whether you live in a city where it's obviously the best time because everything is peaceful, or whether you're in the countryside, it's still the best time. And so Gurudev, we know, is always up early. So anyway, Gurudev did not like devotees getting up late and just rolling up to the veranda. There goes the newspaper and then the devotees wondering why, oh, why Guru Maharaj was so cold, why Gurudev was so cold to me. Well, there's a reason. Um, oh, well. Okay, oh, yes. I, I do have a couple of notes here. Oh, yeah. I, I mean, really, this is a major disturbance to Gurudev. Is the devotees going here and there to go to other temples, go to here from other acharyas, whatever it may be. Gurudev did not appreciate that at all. Everything you will get from Guru Maharaj, and he is presenting Guru Maharaj. Everything you will get from Guru Maharaj, everything you're going to, you will get from Srila Gurudev, who's giving us Guru Maharaj in every breath and every action, etc. And Gurudev, he said of himself, I am a one master dog. That's what Gurudev said, you know, in the best sense, a one master dog. And so this way, he expected that from the devotees and Guru Maharaj expected it from him and he's expecting this from the devotees. So, I mean, really he was disturbed by that. And well, I'm trying to think about, he did not like the sound of dragging things, you know, the sound of a bed if you pull a, like a wooden bed in Navadip and it's going across the floor, oh, that grated with Gurudev. And I mean, there are, there are some things he didn't like. And anyway, it won't, there's nothing we can do about this now because we're not likely to be in a car with him. But when, he, when we were in the car, and again, Chinmoy Dev, who he was driving Gurudev in the later years, and uh, Gurudev did not like if some like, guest who's a VIP, you can say, because Gurudev is you know, inviting, oh, you come in the car with me. But if that devotee starts trying to talk to Gurudev in the car, Gurudev did not like that. He wants privacy in the car. If he starts a conversation, eh, that's fine. But Gurudev's captive, he's in the car, and then devotees are asking, oh, Gurudev, I've got a question about this, this, this. And Gurudev doesn't want that. He's in the car, that's his time, his own time. And if he wants to talk, which he does, time, you know, from time to time, then it is there. Anyhow, these are a few things, and you may well know others, but in the sense of, you know, when we know the 10 offenses to the holy name, then it's not happy to hear about the 10 offenses, but it is happy because we know what to avoid and to try to do the opposite. So I mention that because we sort of spontaneously just came up with a title for today saying, well, what does Gurudev, uh, you know, what pleases Gurudev? What does he want from us? Part one. So we can think, what does he not want from us? <laughs> so I gave the opposite talk today. So anyway, can I just ask to each of you here, anything you know that I don't know, which no doubt there are many, but on this theme, like the specific things which were like rattle building, because he did get, well, yeah, he got rattled about some things. Dishonesty, oh, saying, saying something to Gurudev in front of him, like lying to, oh, that would rattle Gurudev. We've seen that. They did something, and we've got some very strong examples of that one, dishonesty. Mm, I'm adding that to my little I list. I do have to say the time I was there was that, that phase of Guru Dave's life where he was very merciful and he was not telling us anything <laughs> for our benefit, I think. <laughs> well, I know. And about the devotional clothing also, you see one person, and we can think maybe, we can probably guess, you know, like one person does, doesn't wear and Gurudev tolerates, and then others, they point to him and say, oh, he's not wearing, I'm not going to wear either. And actually about intoxication, you know, we all, we, we know that Gurudev, you know, he had some mercy on, you know, one particular devotee who was habituated, like 
very strongly habituated. Then, you know, sadly, other devotees, then they say, oh, yeah, take him. Then, you know, looking for the easy, the, looking for an excuse to do things which actually we know Gurudev doesn't like, but he's tolerating in some cases. So, yes, Gurudev didn't maybe keep on mentioning, but he mentioned so many times. And you can I mean, ask any of the devotees who were there earlier. So it's not that these things didn't matter anymore. It's like Gurudev thinks, no, no. Anyway, these are some thoughts. I, um, I can he, also say that I think the only one time that Gurudev talked to me while driving was when he told me not to run the red light because I'll get a hundred rupees fine. <laughs> <laughs> and then <laughs> that'll be... A, Hundred rupees wasted. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but everybody else is running the red light, so I thought, well, why can't I? Good days, no. Well, there is Murphy's Law. Any of you are Irish descent? Anyway, there is Murphy's Law. You know, everybody else does it, but when we do it, then we're going to get caught. I always bought a ticket for the trains in India. But sometimes the sannyasis would send me to Calcutta in those days when we had to go to Calcutta you know, for many things, like for the plane tickets. Those days, you got a printed plane ticket with carbon paper, like four or five sheets of carbon paper. You had to go to Calcutta in order to reconfirm it, get a sticker and a stamp and these things. And so, you know, our duty, one of our duties was running up and down to Calcutta on the train. And then... There was a particular sannyasi who would give me like the exact amount of money for what was required for his service, but not for the train. So you'd have to go on the train with no ticket because we didn't have any money. We, you know, that was our life. We didn't have any money because we're giving everything to the temple and we think, yes, you know, whatever is required, somehow it will happen. But every time that happened, almost, okay, maybe once or twice, I didn't. But it's like you nev nobody ever checks the tickets on those, in those local trains in India. And each time I got busted. And then I had, to, <laughs> I had to say to him, Maharaj, you know, if you want me to go. And I you know, told him what happened. And then when you have no money, the, the police can't get anything out of you. And you're just you know, some crazy Westerner. So. Hare Krishna. Any also, comments uh, from anybody? I, yes. I also, we just recently saw a video where or that scene where you're talking about with Guru Maharaj and the money that actually happened. When he was speaking some wonderful, beautiful Harikata, and then this one Bengali person comes and interrupts him and he pulls out what you're just saying that little sachet and gives out the money and then continues. And when Guru Maharaj disappeared, when he passed away, then for a long time, I don't know if it is still there, but for when, when we were there, then under his mattress in his bed in the room, still that was there with the same notes in that when, as when Gurudev, uh, Guru Maharaj disappeared. If it is still there, I do not know. And Gurudev very careful about any, about, very careful about money. And we must be, be careful. Kelly Kadawana Didi, do you have something to say? <laughs> She's trying. I couldn't figure out. No, I just wanted to ask Maharaj because, you know, we've heard what Guru Maharaj um, didn't like as far as Kirtan in the temple. Um, but what about for Shula Gurudev? Uh, well, I'm wondering what you're thinking. Okay, so, so can you just say some things you've heard? I mean, I've been in the temple many times with, with Guru Maharaj hearing everything upstairs. Just can you mention some things you've heard that Guru Maharaj did not like? Then I can um, add. Well, for example, for Navadweep, the ladies weren't leading. Um, but also he didn't like it to be too loud, too sort of showy. Um, you know, that kind of like, kind of <laughs> style. 
but I'm not sure about Shula Gurudev. I didn't hear specifically. I mean, times, you know, we heard, oh, he didn't like that particular way of someone singing, but anything specific about that you can think of? Well, <laughs> there's somebody there in Australia of Indian origin who can mention that Gurudev definitely got a little excited with him when he sang the wrong words. <laughs> or he sang the wrong way around. Oh, uh, I, am, I am the Lord and you are my dog, isn't it? What is it? Avinava knows the Bengali. He got it the wrong way around, it's meant to be. Uh, you know, you are, the, you are the Lord and I am your dog. And there's our sweet friend saying the other way around and brought a good, a good chastisement from Gurudev. And then he is saying, Gurudev, Gurudev, I'm only following. And Paramahamsa Maharaj was leading and Gurudev didn't accept that. <laughs> yes, but you are following. You're singing it. But anyway, that's not in the kind of the category of the, you know, being rattled and disturbed. Yeah, I think what I could comment on that is that, right, Gurudev, as Guru Maharaj did not like that uh, oh, stuff, which the devotees would do um, mainly when they knew that a Westerner was recording them. And they, of course, thinking, oh, this is going to be very nice, Kirtan. I'll be, my nice voice is going to go all over the world. Normally, they wouldn't do that, but yeah. Okay, when I have seen Gurudev, Gurudev Govinda Marsh, very rattled, very, I mean, rat, rat, shouting <laughs> strongly, like shouting, asserting, rattled. Oh, I was, okay, you can say, answering back to Gurudev, like giving your own, and Gurudev tells, don't do something, and then you're trying to, answer back to him and say, oh, but some way we are this, 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 and trying to give your own reason. Gurudev did not appreciate that. This is an example of that. Maybe I should just add that to my own little notes here about, you know, not answering back to him. Um, but we were in Brindavan and it was, you know, the Kartik, it was Kartik time. And so with the Kartik pilgrimage, we were in Brindavan. That year, Srila Gurudev came, we are there. And actually, for those of you who've been to um, Brindavan, it was in the Modi Bhavan. Modi Bhavan, until today it is there. It's a, like an, uh, an ashram, but it's, uh, it doesn't have like resident brahmacharis. You can rent it. And we rented this whole place, which has like many rooms and the kirtan hall, or, you know, like this, and big kitchen. So just like an ashram, we can cook, we can do lectures, everything. And it was Kartik time. And one of our Bengali devotees who regularly would come and, and be like one of the good Kirtan leaders, a classic, you know, classic attendee at the festivals, he started to sing some like Radharani songs at that time. And then Gurudev heard, and he was just like maybe two doors down his room. And then the devotees are in the room singing. And Gurudev then came from his room, he came from his room and came in and said to the, that devotee who we know very well, he's now passed away by the way, anyway, so it's, if you're trying to think who it is, he's not with us anymore. Anyway, he, um, it, Gurudev said to him, uh, why are you singing this? We sing the songs that Guru Maharaj has approved for us to sing. And then, and it was a Radharani song. And then he said, oh, but it's Kartik and it's Radharani's month. And I'm thinking we can... And then that disturbed Gurudev very much that he like trying to assert that, oh, it's Radharani's month. And Gurudev wouldn't you know, give even a thought of, of that. He, maybe, the first, maybe the first thing he did answer something little, you know, soberly an answer. And then when he again asserted, Guru Dev was very furious. Now, we will sing what Guru Dev has, what Guru Maharaj has given for us. We will not go into these high songs, which do exist. But as we know, the high books and the high songs, they do exist. But they are for those who are actually 
liberated and otherwise for basically all of us there for us to worship so yeah that's a good point that disturbed gurudev but one one was the kirtans which are not you know established not in our songbook not established as the kirtans to sing by gurudev guru Mahar. and the other thing there from that is answering back to gurudev that was definitely never a, never a good idea you know that we know more than he, something like that. So Maharaj, while we're on the topic of kirtans and with different songs, and there are some songs in our songbook currently which we're not singing. But it's not always clear which songs are the ones which we're not singing and which, you know, mm. maybe there could be a footnote somewhere mm. about which songs are the ones that we definitely don't sing out of our current songbooks. I know, and the other, the, the kind of, I don't know whether the right word is dichotomy, but the thing is, in Guru Maharaj's time, actually, we did sing those songs, which we are being told not to sing, but Gurudev has commented that these songs should only be sung by those who are qualified, like Sri Rupa Manjari Pada, we're not going to take this out of the songbook, and it is sung, but we know it is sung by Guru Maharaj, Gurudev, and specifically when there's somebody who they've said, you sing this in that way, sort of more or less singing on their behalf. And so in the present day, the charges we can think on special days. They're not singing that every day, but on some special days, they may be singing that. Um, but in the time of Guru Maharaj, then you're thinking specifically about these songs at the end of Shikshastakam, correct? Well, seven that was, and eight, that was, seven. That was, and I think there's a couple of, you know, songs about Srimati Radharani also that are in there, which are kind of on the edge. I mean, if you read the translation, they're, they're, they seem they're kind of okay, but, you know, the connotation, mm. you know, the, the, the subtle connotation in some of them. And, and I think, it, I'm not sure, I think when Vishaka was here, she yeah. was talking about some songs which are like, oh no, which was surprising. I can't remember which song that was. Now. Mm. Yeah. Anyway, you see, to do that, I would like to have Gurudev with us, just to be sure, you know. Well, I, I, don't think, in, I don't think you can get on Zoom, Maharaj, but when you have a private moment, you can communicate with him and then get back to us. <laughs> I guess, Gurudev, do you have Zoom on, on your computer in the spiritual world? Is there Zoom in Goloka Vrindavan? <laughs> they have something better than Zoom. Hare Krishna. We have, anyway, we have, to, we have to build our antenna to access that. So. Yeah. One thing about this, though, we ourselves will um, definitely, if we see something is, like you're saying, it's implicated something very high then we ourselves will always err, means go on the side of caution and not sing them. We'll sing what we are, what is, you can say, safe. And actually, everywhere, we should try to err on the side of safe, safety, in the sense of, oh, is it right or wrong? Well, I'm not sure, but I know that if we don't do it, it you know, it's not going to be wrong. You know, this kind of thing. In our daily activities, in our writing, in what we speak, we always want to try to be on the right side in that sense. So if in doubt, leave it out, you know, be, be safe like that. You know, we're with Gurudev, you know, quite a lot and definitely always trying to like not disturb him, definitely trying to do the right things. And we actually, I'm trying to think of some things, but many cases come up that, you know, is it right or wrong? Okay, better leave it and we'll stick to what we know is right. So, uh, you know, this I can mention about the songs, but that's something to think about. And so this time I actually have a notepad, which was given to me because the devotees here saw that I am it looks a bit large for you, Maharaj. Using scraps of paper. So they say, oh, here. And they gave me a notepad. So now this is page one of the notepad. 
It is a bit large for me. But another thing is yesterday, I was given a tube of toothpaste because my little tube is almost run out. And it's like a bigger tube. And I think, oh, I should have said not to get a bigger tube. Then I thought, well, you know, at the moment, the way things are going, we can have a larger pad and we can have a bigger tube of toothpaste. Because Just remember, my you know, parmesan has got another one of those mini ones for you. I made him take one. So he's got one. Next, next time you get on a plane. <laughs> Anyway, now all our, you know, how to travel on everything in one bag of seven kgs that you need, all that information is just philosophy. It's not practice because we can't travel anywhere. Even in Thailand, you can't go from one district to another. You know how they have these provinces, a little like India, where, you know, if you go to the mountains, they have their own kind of little kingdoms or whatever it is. So, you know, everything is quite restricted in the whole world. So, yeah, my little tube of toothpaste has become a big tube and my simple piece of paper has come, become a writing pad. So, anyway, I'm just making a note to clarify, clarify which songs are borderline. All right. Uh, any other point from anybody? Yes, Maharaj. Uh... Um, I'm just curious uh, as to when, because I know in our kirtan, we do a very simple Murdanga kartal. Was that Prabhupada Saraswati Thakur's kind of uh, mood? Or did that start with Guru Maharaj? Or, and Gurudev continued that, right? He, he felt that was a way to have kirtan, not to include other instruments. Uh, yes, 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 and yes. Srila Saraswati Thakur established basically what we do do today. Guru Maharaj, is it upheld it? What is the right word? Guru Maharaj kept that and kept that strictly. So in Nabadeep in particular, um, we can think that during Guru Maharaj and Gurudev's time, what happened in Nabadeep was following that. And not only... Um, not only in like the sense of kirtans, but in the sense of even in Nabadi Westerners, you know, we could not go into the kitchen. But that was in Nabadeep. It was not in Dum Dum Park and other places. It was for keeping the strictness that Guru Maharaj established for a certain time, place, and circumstance. And the time, place, and circumstance was that it was a very Brahminical area. So he didn't want to disturb the local Brahmins. He wanted to harmonize with the environment. So the, the uh, Mridanga and cartels we see all over India, the, all the temples, it is still strictly of that. Though in the West, Gurudev did allow, you know, for some purpose, but not really approve in the temple, in fact, not approve in the temple, but for some purpose when they're doing some public program or something, okay, they're using this, let it be. But, um, Goswami Maharaj some time ago mentioned about the call and cartel. He said that Guru Maharaj said about call and cartel that these are the eternal paraphernalia of Mahaprabhu. And, you know, Mahaprabhu, he knows about musical instruments. India is you know, the richest place for musical instruments. You know, for, and for fine music and ragas and, you know, all these things. The science of music, just like the science of actually everything, is rich in India. So Mahaprabhu knew very well about you know, all these other instruments. And another point is, you know that the harmonium is not an Indian instrument. It's come from the piano in the West and then has evolved into this like portable thing and then became popular in India. But it is not a traditional Indian instrument, but for the sake of, you know, um, adding some uh, attractive sound. And you know, those who play the harmonium, they start to do, you know, what Kelly Kadamba Nana was giving a mention of just now. They start to do this, go up in a, you know, and go on and on and on with the harmonium, you know. And that is uh, not approved. But yes, so just the point that, to answer your question, Sarasati Thako, Guru Maharaj, Guru Dev, Kol Kartel, and with that extra thing, that the Kol Kartel is the 
it, they are eternal paraphernalia of Mahaprabhu. And then the other point that Kelly was mentioning about ladies leading. How did Gurudev feel about that? Uh, he was happy that ladies led. But in Nabadeep, and basically, well, Nabadeep you can say, but in Dum Dum Park, I'm also trying to think. Maybe they didn't do in Dum Dum Park. But yes, he had, uh, sorry, I'm just making a note. Uh, he had that, uh, oh, sorry, he was open to the ladies singing and the ladies did sing uh, in many places. Gurudev was not lady body, man body selective, but for circumstance, then, as we said just now, about maintaining some particular standard that Guru Maharaj had, had established in Nabadeep, he maintained that throughout. So in Nabadeep, we did not have ladies singing even after those programs. I think when I'm just trying to think that on the Samadhi Mandir, you know, we had those programs in English, Russian, Spanish, Chinese, whatever it is, but at nine o'clock every morning on the Samadhi Mandir. There also, I don't think we had ladies singing. Maybe sometimes. But this, but certainly around the world, not disapproved. Ladies can sing, but the harmonium and these things, not to do. And ladies can go in the kitchen, and in the West, Westerners can go in the kitchen. Just as well. <laughs> Otherwise, what would you eat? <laughs> and and did, did Gurudev have any, have any notion or was he aware of Westerners taking certain mantras, certain songs, and then kind of westernizing them and distributing them that way? Was he aware of that? How did he? Uh, he was aware of it. And I think in the car, wasn't, I think there was a CD in the car when you were driving it. And it was a CD of a devotee, Hari Bandhu Prabhu, from Australia. And he made a CD. And there was one track that Gurudev liked very much. And he would sing along to the track. And when the track was not playing, sometimes Gurudev was singing the track. So I can try to get my best singing voice here. <coughs> um, but it was, how did, I know the words. I know the words. Okay, but what was the tune? Uh, okay. Trinada pi suni che na Taro reva sahish nu na Amanina mana de na Kitaniya sara harihi And Hari Bandhu is playing the guitar and he has some uh, maybe drum or some kind of other music is there. So it is quite Western, but it was just with a na na like this at the end. And Gurudev. He liked that and he sang along with it. But not that we will do like that in the temple. I mean, we understand, again, time, place and circumstance. But Gurudev would play that CD in the car. And it had other tracks on it. But that track, you know, he'd come back to. Of course, he likes the words. But he also, you know, he got into the mood. And... On one of, the on one of the very few times, like the two times that I went with Gurudev abroad, um, then that time in Australia, he sent myself and Poonananda a week or so, I think maybe 10 days before, before he went to Australia, the year that they're going to uh, inaugurate the deities there. Because Gurudev, they kept calling him, how to do this, what to do this, and like again and again. And then Gurudev, he said, he called, well, no, I didn't call for me. I was already there. But he, he said, um, you and Poonananda, you go to Australia now. And this was just like a few days before he's going to go. He said, you go there and make sure the arrangement, because they're having trouble with the arrangement. And so, you know, we have some idea, you know, how to do things for Gurudev in, you know, because we've seen before or several times. So myself and Poonananda, we went early to Australia and to help set everything up for the, the program and, uh, and the altar and you know, all the things that were needed. And 
Then it was his Vyasa Puja while we were there. That year there was Christmas, there was his Vyasa Puja, there's New Year and the installation of the deity. So like it was a, quite a high uh, intensity visit of Gurudev. And on his birthday, on his Vyasa Puja, then that same devotee, Hari Bandhu, set up with his guitar and with his you know, other instruments and the modern things which were there. And Gurudev did not disapprove. But it is a one-off thing for his kind of entertainment. And he was happy. And there he sang live. Live, not recorded. Trinarapi suni chena taroreva sahishnu na amanina manare na etanya sarahari Jai Shil Gurude. Jai. I, I also heard Maharaj, and I don't remember quite where I heard this, but that even Guru Maharaj was uh, expressing some happiness or openness to the idea of taking the English translations of some of the Bengali um, and, and assumably Sanskrit songs and singing them as well in the West. Right, Bhaktivinoda Thakur had predicted something like this, I understand, that oh, these, will be, these songs will be available in the languages all over the world and they will sing these songs. But we have tried to sing some translations <laughs> with, mixed, with mixed success, reference to Sri Sri Prapanajiva and Amrita. Mm. And, uh, you know, some, something can be done. But whether that is part of our temple program, let us try, first of all, let us try to get some like faithful translation or faithful song that we can say, oh, yes, this is approved. And then see whether, then we'll take the next step, you know, to see whether, okay, can we sing this in the temple? But when we, the ones that we have tried to sing, then they, because it's in our own language, in my case, English, so would they say, then uh, we do remember what we're singing. Mm. Anything but Christ. Oh, no, now it's the wrong tune. Sri Guru Charana Padma. Okay. Anything but Krishna's message. No as falsehood such a passage. Such a harlot is so very dangerous. So we tend to remember what is actually saying. You know, rather than if we're singing the Bengali or Sanskrit. Then we, Bengali or Sanskrit. And by the way, you know, I have got a little list of things for like future days. And, you know, we sing Hari Harai and Amakrishna, you know, every day, twice a day, sometimes more. But I, it came in my mind that it's good for us. We don't have to try to learn, you know, new Sanskrit and Bengali and so many things. Because we have a lot of Sanskrit and Bengali, but some things which we already know then it's good for us to actually you know, feel it word by word, what we're singing. So I thought for an, you know, like another occasion, then Hari, Harai, and Amakrishna, which we already know, it's not we have to learn something new, but you know, how many of us really are feeling when you know, we come to the, the next verses? First four verses, yes, mostly, but then after that, you know, we tend to just sing along. So why did I mention that? Oh, because you're saying about singing uh, English or Italian translations. Italian would probably be really sweet. The, oh, most, the most musical, every word is a song language on planet Earth that I've come across. Italian. Yeah, magnifico. If that's Italian, it's probably Spanish. It is. Okay. Divya Shakti did he? Oh, Divya Shakti was very brave in her service in Navadip. And, okay, we can say if you want the list of you know, things that may, that may disturb Gurudev, was you know, rearranging things in his room or rearranging his desk. Or something. Oh, I wouldn't do that. <laughs> but Divya Shakti, she was very brave. And by her unique dedication and devotion we can say really 
And we, she, I, maybe others were there, but she and I, we were holding our breath, honestly, when Gurudev came back from a world tour because Divya Shakti very bravely cleared everything in Gurudev's room in Navadi. His shelves had become absolutely cluttered because devotees come, they give him toys, gifts, pictures, all sorts of things. So Gurudev puts on the shelf. So everywhere that there was even a square inch, a square centimeter of space, something was there. And Divya Shakti very bravely removed everything, repainted the whole room very nicely, and then put things back as she, she's trying to think, okay, what out of all of this, what will Gurudev you know, want most of all? So we held our breath. Gurudev was on a world tour, so quote, unquote, he didn't know, but you know, news always, he knows everything, you know, he can see. But anyway, when he came back, Gurudev came upstairs and he was happy. And then, you know, that was like a big relief that we didn't know whether he's going to be unhappy. But, and Divya Shakti is with us, she can maybe comment something about this and about other things, like what Gurudev did not like and what he did like. But, uh, before removing everything, we systematically photographed every shelf, every place, and Divya Shakti carefully putting everything from this shelf in this place in the servitor's room, you know, where they stored the, the cloth and the blankets and stuff like that, not the kitchen area, but beyond that. They put everything like systematically. Divya Shakti did all this. So if Gurudev like did say, Oh, why have you moved everything? It's all this stuff. How will I find this? And I, then we were ready, she was ready to put everything back like exactly as it was. But Gurudev, Gurudev accepted the service and I mean, he knew it was time for an for a overhaul, no doubt. And he, he'll have just come from the West where in general, you know, the houses are uncluttered, more or less, with one or two exceptions. Those of you, no one there who's listening is in that house, but we have one or two uh, hosts whose houses are very lived in. And we've been to some places, and Abhi never knows, we went to one place, and the family were not there, remember, in New Zealand? Abhi never, the family, they said, yes, you come, but we'll be arriving later in the day. They gave us the code number for how to get in the house. And honestly, we went in the house, and my comment was, oh, they don't live here. They just must be their second house. They just sharing with us like that because it, there was nothing out of place. Everything was like pucker. And then the family came back and we found they did live there. And his husband, wife, and two children of, what, nine and 12 or something, this kind of age, or nine and, I don't know, young, youngish children. And then, you know, after a couple of days, or maybe that day, I commented to the wife and said, well, I am impressed by how like, clean your house is. Is it like this every day or just you know, because we are coming? Did you go to a lot of trouble? And she said, no, like this every day. And then I said, and they were fairly you know, well to do. I said, so you must have very good servants. She said, yes, I have three servants, my husband and my two children. <laughs> I was amazed how organized the house was. Anyway. Gurudev had just come back from the West, you know, where he'll have seen things a little less cluttered than his room was. So it was probably a very good time to do it. He came back and he saw, oh, his, his room is now like organized and clean. Divya Shakti, did he tell us something? Divya Shakti. Yes, Divya Shakti, please. Can you, can you can hear, hear me? You. Yes. We can hear you. Please, please tell us something from your heart. I can't see you though. I, uh, anyway, Guru Dave was just very merciful uh, about, um, I guess maybe that's why um, when, you know, when Guru Maharaj's room had to be done, he kind of sanctioned that. Do you remember Madhu Sudan Maharaj? And, yes, um, I do. Yes. And so that was a real big um, um, endeavor because Jagam Mohini was actually there at that time. And um, we knew that the room had to be um, 
redone because there were animals that had gone inside um, Shiva Sridhar Maharaj's quarters and just kind of made a mess of everything. And I was really shocked, you know, because uh, the the um, upholstery on his chairs and the couch uh, was totally um, contaminated by a, a, well, how could it ever be contaminated? But it was soiled from the animals. And um, it was just um, unbelievable. So we had to, um, actually, I asked Gurudev if we could, um, you know, redo Srila Sridhar Maharaj's uh, veranda because it needed to be taken care of really bad because it was really sad. And um, and he said yes. And so I we had to actually we couldn't get the couch out because it was so it was so uh it was so big and the the stairs going down Shiva Sri Don Maharaj's uh veranda was so narrow. So we had to take the couch over the wall and lever you know, levy the couch down with a rope uh to get the couch out, to get the couch reupholstered. And so, you know, that happened and the two chairs. So um you know, he kind of said, yeah, you, you can do that. And I think that was after that we did his room, you know. So um, anyway, he was just very merciful and, uh, you know, got to uh, reupholster the two chairs and reupholster the couch and, and um, you know, make sure the chairs didn't get switched around and uh, – you know, then, you know, uh, we got, I got, uh, um, you know, chair cushions made and things like that. But he was very happy. And not only he was happy, but I remember after that, after that mercy came and we got to do um, Guru Maharaj's veranda, that Go Swami Maharaj came upstairs. And, you know, because he was there in those years. And, you know, I got to redo the floor, repaint the red floor and and do all that. And he was like, he was so happy. Goswami was. And, um, you know, there was a lot of things that needed to be done in Shila Sri Maharaj's veranda. The the screens on the on the windows and the the blinds, the bamboo blinds. It was all to keep the the uh, um, the animals out and to keep the sun out and to keep the rain. Sometimes there were heavy heavy rainstorms and they would just come in and just wash out the whole front of the 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 the, the room. And so you can imagine that those chairs and, and, and the couch and everything, they were all being soiled by the wind and the rain and the sun. And, you know, so, you know, we got to redo that. And then Gurudev came up there and, and it seemed like he was happy. He kind of let me do that. And so I was very grateful and very honored. And so many devotees got to help out. I remember, um, uh, <laughs> Um, let me see what what's his name. He was in these boys. Oh, anyway, was in Mexico. Uh, two boys in in Mexico. They helped with the with the floor. And anyway, it was just um, it was just amazing that you know Guru Dev sanctioned that. He was just so kind that he got to do that. But Madhusudan Maharaj, you you encouraged me so much to do so many things in Navadri. And so well, I, I was really maybe, grateful. And, and maybe I had you with step Kuhn. into the firing line instead of me, maybe. <laughs> but, but the very first one, I, I remember how intensely, oh no, what's going to happen, you know, when Gurudev comes back? We were both waiting, myself very much like waiting, oh, what's Gurudev going to say? And by the way, I can point out the Divya Shakti Didi, many did help and many did help financially because N not a penny is coming from the temple. Dibya Shakti from her own collection and from collecting from devotees who 
you know, they, and she's mentioned, oh, we're doing this saver and devotees donating. Then she arranged everything, not only like physically, but no, nothing is coming from the temple. She is doing all of this. And year by year, whenever mm. she comes, then very exemplary for the devotees that she's seeing what needs to be done and doing what needs to be done without taking anything from the temple, but only you know, finding resourcefully collecting and doing. And I can also add that later, again on another world tour, Devya Shakti taking the opportunity, she did the whole uh, repainting and tidying up of the Dum Dum Park veranda, the original, the veranda, actually the one right beside the temple, the veranda in Calcutta. And so that also, and only one thing with that one, I think until today, the paint was very pink. <laughs> No, you know who did that? That was Nanda Priya. That was Nanda Priya oh. and Deva Bandhu. Remember when oh, Gurudev right. went away, then yep. they did that one. Following they did in Dum Dum Park. Divya Shakti, following <laughs> your example. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> they did it following your example. So you... Anyway, I don't know all about that. <laughs> all right. One thing, anyway. all dear devotees, one thing, that is I need to go. Um, because now our morning program is happening here. I'm ashamed to say, on behalf of the local devotees, here 6.15 is Mongolati. <laughs> I'm not ashamed to say. It's actually for practicality for the local people too, that we don't wake them up too early with the, car with the cartels and Madanga, the eternal paraphernalia of Mahaprabhu. And uh, so I need to go, but I can leave the meeting and you are, are together. You may, you may continue. And what I think is good for the future, I didn't organize for today, but maybe one of you there um, can just organize a, a track of Gurudev singing Hari Harai Nama Krishna and then can share your screen and the audio so that everybody can just, we can finish also with Hari Harai Nama Krishna, but with Gurudev or with somebody singing, but I suggest Gurudev uh, singing that then. That's a good way to end. We know we can't do, we've tried, we did some experiment before, trying to do Kirtan together over Zoom. And it was very funky because there is a little delay. And so it kind of all goes strange. And so I think we can't do Kirtan as such, but if we hear Gurudev, we can always sing along. And it's a nice way to end the class because we do want to try to keep these programs as much you know, as, as we would be together as possible. So who would like to arrange that? Maybe, maybe Abhinavar and Kelly? Oh yes, okay, Govinda Nandini. Yes, because Govinda Nandini, you are a host, so you can share the screen also. I don't know if everybody can share the screen, but- Only co-hosts, so those who uh, volunteer to be a co-host can, you know, contribute that yeah. way. So you can find a track and then do that. But if you kindly excuse me, I need to go. Um, we've been here happily for a very short hour. This hour, the clock is going very fast. And but very good to see all of you here. And um, not an opportunity for everyone. Uh, maybe today I'm speaking too much. I'm very sorry. But uh, happy to be able to remember Gurudev, remember Guru Mahara, remember what we're doing. And may us all have a successful few days. Do we have an appointment for the next one? Are we doing this regularly? It has been announced to uh, Wednesdays and Saturdays and I can just continue to keep putting the word out there. Wednesday and Saturday, California time or Washington state time, right? Yes. Okay. All right. So please excuse me, my obeisances to one and all. I'm going to change gear, move from around the world and come down into our beautiful temple here. Now it is the light before the sunrise already has started. And then the program is going to start in six minutes and Mahananda is here. So it's starting on time. Vanchikau Patrubhishtra, Kripasindubhi Evacha, Patitanam Pavanebhyo, Vaishnavebhyo, Namo Namaha. Jai Shri Gurudev Ki Jai, Jai Shri Guru Maharaj Ki Jai, Jai Shri Bhakti Siddhanta Sarasati Thakur Ki Jai, Shri Rupanuga Guru Vaga Ki Jai, Shri Chaitanya Sarasati Acharya Brinda Ki Jai, all the assembled devotees Ki Jai, Nitai Gaur Premanandi Hari Hari Bo. Thank you all.
Wishing, wishing you successful savor at every moment until we meet again and when we meet again. Dandavat. Dandavat, Maharaj.